The plastic bags produced in Iyad Monzer's factory are sold across Lebanon and in several other Middle Eastern countries. He has a workforce of 50 and the factory runs day and night. But it gets electricity from the grid for only a few hours a day. Generators at the factory provide the rest. Diesel. We need lots of diesel. The big 640 kilowatt generator uses 80 liters an hour, or more than 1,500 liters a day. That much fuel costs between 12 and 13 thousand dollars every day. Burning just one liter of diesel fuel results in emissions of about three kilograms of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Plus, there's soot and noise. Monza would like not to run his generators 24 hours a day and instead switch to clean energy. We're looking for alternative sources of energy. Wind would be great. The cost of running a generator is just too high. He contracted Ralph Stefan, a clean energy consultant from Beirut, involved in an interesting project. It involves setting up green energy generation systems, linking them up to the grid, and installing a net metering system to track the flows of electricity. If you feed green energy into the grid, you get credits, so you can later take the same amount of energy from the grid. It promises to be a good deal, especially for companies. They have Sundays, for example, where they don't work. The net metering could be used to supply the grid where they are producing electricity from whether wind or sun and in periods where they are not working. This is a good incentive, I think, and the, the factories should take, should take advantage of it. Energy from renewable sources fed into the grid is, of course, available to everyone. It also helps make the system more stable, reducing the frequency of power outages. The United Nations Development Agency set up the project, called CEDRO. Its engineers have drawn up an interactive wind map of Lebanon to identify the best locations for new wind turbines. More and more individuals and companies are calling up to ask how they can generate clean energy. It's a very a good solution. Uh, first, it gives you electricity, and then you, you reduce your CO2 emissions and you save the environment. And at the same time, in a few years, it will be just as uh, cost effective, uh, just as uh, the same price as conventional electricity. A number of schools are involved in the project. The lights now stay on even when there's an outage, at least on sunny days. That's thanks to the solar panels on the roof. Excess energy goes into the grid, earning the school's credits for cloudy days. Then they can draw power from the grid, as long as there's no outage. Overall, energy costs for these schools are trending lower. Before we had this system, we used to have our own generator, which uh, costs a lot. And most of the neighbors here, they ask me what's this and what we use it for. And they are very, uh, you know, uh, eager to do such a project. I don't know if it, uh, the cost will make a difference. So if it gets cheaper, they will all do it. I'm sure of that. A few weeks earlier, engineers involved in the project in Lebanon attended a seminar here in Berlin. It was about the integration of wind and solar energy into the grid, how it can make the grid more stable, the latest technology, and about problems that tend to arise in such ventures. Uh, it makes us see what is possible and it helps us set uh, as well uh, steps into how to achieve the goals we've set. So the technology we've taken, I mean, the, the knowledge we, we have seen here, the, the way the, the, German, uh, the Germans, let's say, have, have done it. Rima Asaf is an electrical engineer. 
She works for the National Electricity Company and is in charge of linking up renewable energy sources to the grid. She says she found the seminar useful and that it fired her imagination. I will uh, uh, apply uh, and uh, design and construct a uh, PV uh, uh, system in my uh, in my home. Okay, so because uh, I um, in my uh, region where, where I uh, live, uh, the the sun is uh, the radiation is is high. She's building a new house in the town of Baalbek, 90 kilometers east of Beirut. There's plenty of sun and wind there. Finally, we can, uh, I think uh, we need uh, about uh, four to five uh, months to, to build the, the system. For now, two car batteries help her out at home when there's an outage. This photovoltaic system is on the roof of a high-rise in Beirut. Rima Asaf installed the net metering equipment here. Every day the sun shines, electricity costs for the building decline. And now they rarely have to fire up the diesel generator.